up everybody 78 Gemini here hope you guys are having a terrific day I am back with another episode of breaking points and this time around we are going to France on the Le Mans circuit I'm gonna be doing the circuit with the two extra chicanes down the straight but I just wanted to do a quick recap on what this uh, series is about for all you new viewers I came up with this idea to try to help uh, newcomers or people trying to race without any assists. In other words, racing in uh, simulation, in cockpit view, no ABS, no traction, no stability. The only assist I got on is normal steering. Everything else is off. So my goal with this series is to try to help people try to become a better circuit racer. I will stop at each breaking point, showing you where that breaking point is, and giving you further advice for that coming turn. I will be using the 2002 Nissan Skyline GTR R34 with a S-Class build and a tune with my adjustments, which I will be using also for this episode. If you missed the first episode, you can grab the tune and build from the first episode. Alright, with all that said, let's get started. Here's our first uh, breaking point. It's more of a simple tap on the brakes with a downshift combination. What I do, I use these um, tire markings on the track as my indicator. And I normally start braking right after it. This is more of a bend than it is a turn. You would want to take a uh, soft approach for this bend, maybe braking a little earlier. As you can see, I'm in fifth gear and I'll be downshifting to fourth, holding fourth gear with a steady throttle right before I get to the S's, where I will be downshifting to second gear for the S's. You can even take the S's in third gear. Also, you want to be smooth through there maybe applying some throttle in between the S's. But really quick, I'm gonna show you a small clip on how not to take this turn. an example on how not to take that turn. You saw how I overshot it, charged in too hard, and was nowhere ready for the S's. Okay, so now let's proceed on to the next breaking point. Okay, here's our second breaking point. As you can see, there's no uh, braking indicators as well. What I normally do, I use the total advertisement where the arrow is pointing at as my braking uh, indicator. You should uh, start off braking before it, you know, practicing until you get uh, further and further up into the uh, total advertisement. But the furthest you want it to go into it is maybe half a car's length into the uh, advertisement, where you will be hitting turns two and three that make up the S's. Normally I use second gear, sometimes third gear through the S's. I'm going to show you a uh, close-up of the uh, turns two and three where you want to be uh, pretty cautious where there's different, uh, I think they're rumble strips, but they're uh, elevated to a uh, different degree. Here's a close-up of the uh, left-hand side part of the S and also showing you the right-hand part of the uh, S. As you can see on the outside of the normal rumble strip, you will see those three individual uh, yellow, uh, I don't know, bumps. 
uh, be very, very cautious driving over those. You don't want to hit those. I remember even sometimes uh, where they had flipped my car over while racing. Once again, be cautious coming in through those S's. Okay, with all that said, let's uh, proceed to the next breaking point. Alright, here's our next breaking point, right before turns 4 and 5. This is another quick tap of the brake with a downshift to third. Just give the uh, brake a quick tap, more or less where I am now. You can use these uh, two indents on the left and the right as a uh, indicator. You can also see the brake marks on the pavement. You can also use that as a uh, indicator. So a quick tap of the brakes, downshift into third, and using third gear with a steady throttle through turn four and five. When you exit turn five, you're going to need to upshift to fourth, where you will be coming up to turn six, called Tertry Rouge, before the first section of the long straightaway. <laughs> Okay, breaking point number four. The arrow is pointing at the 100 meter marker. This is right before turn six, leading you to the first section of the long straightaway. You want to start braking before the 100 meter marker, more or less where I am now. This is also a slight squeeze of the brake and a downshift to third. Start turning in right on top of the 100 meter marker. Hitting the inside rumble strips and working your way outwards for a smooth apex. You will notice that I didn't even hit the rumble strip but still got a decent entrance and exit. Once out of turn six, stay towards your left. Try not to be changing lanes. Stay to your left where this section of the track is where most of the overtaking is done. Okay, here's our next breaking point. The arrow is pointing at the 200 meter marker. This is a, a pretty tough uh, breaking point. It's uh, pretty easy to miss when you're doing 193 miles per hour. But there is uh, two indicators, as you can see. There's one on the left and also one on the right. From here, you will be approaching the first set of chicanes called La Arche Chicane also known as PlayStation Chicane. It starts off with a right-hander looping into a right-hander and followed up with the second section of the straight called Musong Straight. You're going to be pretty heavy on the brakes for at least 180 meters, downshifting all the way to third and keep it in third with a steady throttle through the chicane. You'll want to enter this chicane somewhere between 60 to 65 miles per hour. Try using the rumble strips on your way in. Be uh, pretty cautious in the middle of the chicane where those rumble strips are tapered and uh, pretty easy for you to lose control of your car. Once you exit, hit your apex and merge to the far left lane. Once again, be careful with overtaking traffic. Once you notice it's clear, switch to the right lane and prepare yourself for the next braking point where this time it's going to be a left-hander. See you guys at the next braking point.
Okay, so here we are. As you can see, it's also indicated with a uh, 200 meter marker. This is also uh, pretty easy to miss. First, due to the high speeds that you're at, as you can see, I'm doing 187 miles per hour. And second, there's lots of shade in this area from the trees. You can start breaking here to practice, but this is quite early for you to start breaking. You should want to break maybe 20 to 30 meters in front of the 200 meter marker. The coming chicane is pretty similar to the last one, but this time it's a left-hander looping out to a left-hander. You're also going to want to take this turn in third gear. Steady throttle throughout the chicane. And once again, try to avoid the middle rumble strips where these are even more tapered than the last. One of my techniques for going through the middle part using the rumble strips is getting two wheels on the outside of the rumble strip. By doing this, believe it or not, it won't unstable your car as much. Here we are, our next breaking point. The arrow is pointing at the 100 meter marker. This is right before turn 9 called Musain. Musain is a low corner. You're gonna want to start breaking right after the uh, 100 meter marker, maybe uh, 20 meters into it, and downshifting all the way down to second gear. Mulsain is a much tighter corner than you would think, more than 90 degrees in fact. Try to straighten the corner as much as you can, but you don't want to get hard on the accelerator until you're almost out of it. I'm going to show you the correct line for this corner and a uh, technique I use for this corner. So what I do, I start breaking 20 to 30 meters into the 100 meter marker. I'm usually in and out of my brakes and downshifting as I go. I brake a little bit, ease off, downshift. Before I downshift, I rev my engine. This will bring the car to a neutral state. Brake some more, followed up with another downshift. So it's a brake, downshift, accelerating, combination. It's a real life technique called heel to toe braking. So you're going to want to stay all the way to your left. Okay, what I do, I aim for this white line here. Normally I get two wheels on the outside of the line. It's okay, you won't get a dirty lap unless you get all four wheels on the outside of the line. In all situations, you want to use as most of the track as you can. Ride in the line until you hit the apex. You might have problems viewing the apex in cockpit view. But use your side window and look for the rumble strip. You'll want to enter this turn, like I said, in second gear, somewhere between 40 and 45 miles per hour. You can also use the uh, tire markings as a reference for your apex. And easy on your throttle on your way out. Alright, and that's pretty much it for this section. Uh, see you guys at the next breaking point. So here we are at our next breaking point. 
and this is right before turn 10. The arrow is pointing at the 100 meter marker. You'll want to tap your brakes right after it, or maybe right on top of it, with a downshift to fourth gear. You'll want to hug the inside of the apex with a follow up of a downshift to third gear for a left hander called Indianapolis. <laughs> Okay, here's breaking point number, I don't know, I lost count already guys, <laughs> but anyway, the arrow is pointing at the 50 meter mark, it's uh, pretty easy to miss, it's pretty small and high up, but this turn is pretty easy to judge since you're at pretty low speeds, but what I do, I start breaking uh, right on top of it, or a little afterwards. You'll want to downshift to second gear and try using the rumble strip on your way out. I know I might sound repetitive lots of uh, the time, but it makes sense when you actually get to the breaking point and taking that turn. So uh, once again, a uh, downshift to second, breaking on top of the 50 meter marker and easing your way through the turn with a steady throttle. After this turn called Arnage, there ain't no breaking point until you get to the Ford Chicane. There ain't much braking, but mostly uh, throttle control through Porsche Curve until you get to turn 17. There will be a slight tap of the brake with a downshift to third. But I'll pause myself there and show you what's going on in that area. Okay, we are now entering the Porsche curve. Normally what I do is a gentle squeeze of the brake and a downshift to fourth. Remember, always brake before you downshift. And you're probably also wondering, man, Gemini revs the shit out of the engine, doesn't he? Please do excuse my French. <laughs> yeah, I really like redlining. It's also smart doing so. You don't want to be making unnecessary shifts. Shifting costs you time. So for these next uh, few turns, I'll be keeping it in fourth gear and just throttle control in and out of the turns. This is the section I was talking about where I downshift to third. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be downshifting here, but for some reason I do. It's where I feel most comfortable taking this uh, exit at New Mason Blanche. When I try taking this uh, exit in fourth gear, uh, I feel that the car understeers for me when it doesn't understeer in any other uh, turn. If you guys disagree with me, just leave me a comment in the uh, comment box or maybe giving me some advice for exiting the new Mason Blanche corner. All right, so after uh, this exit, we will be coming up to the Ford chicane, which you'll need to downshift to third and following up with a second gear downshift at the final chicane. All 
All right, guys, we're almost done. But here's a, uh, another uh, breaking point. I use the entrance to pit lane as a braking indicator. But with more detail, I use that white line. And you can see that it kind of breaks off. It really doesn't break off. It's just uh, some tire markings that make it look like it does, uh, you know, break off. So I kind of use that as my braking indicator. You'll want to use uh, third gear for the Ford chicane. Uh, try to use as much of the rumble strip as you can. It's kind of uh, threading the needle here. So you don't want to be turning too much. Try hitting the inside and following up with the outside rumble strip. Also, be uh, very cautious on the way out where there's more of those yellow bumps on the outside of the uh, rumble strip. With a uh, smooth exit in third gear, getting on the gas a bit and following up with a downshift to second gear for the final uh, turns. That's it. We went around the whole track. I think I pretty much covered all the braking points. And my best advice for uh, some of the turns. Now I'm going to do a whole lap without pausing. Also, uh, stick around towards the end where I got some uh, motivation for you guys. <laughs>
right, well, that's it, guys, uh, for this episode. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. But there was just something I want to tell you guys uh, before I leave. I haven't raced this track for maybe, say, a year, almost a year. Last time I raced this track was when I actually was uh, racing online. But since the uh, track was requested, I decided to go ahead and do it. To tell you the truth, I know where one breaking point was on this track. Whenever I raced this track, it was always online. And normally when I race online, I use the breaking line. So it just goes to show you with few hours of practice what you can accomplish. Before even trying to race the track and finding out where each breaking point is, I just uh, go around the track slow and just check out the track and uh, look for signs. Then gradually I start racing it, you know, then uh, you get the hang of it. You start memorizing where the uh, breaking points are. I know it's hard, but it only took me about two and a half hours to present you these results. And that's it. That's all I got for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see another episode of uh, Breaking Points, just leave me a uh, track suggestion in the comment box. And all I ask is if you do consider leaving the video a like for my hard work. Talk to you guys soon. Take care, everybody. Peace.